Ahmed Gulak's killing intensifies tension in Southeast on Biafra Memorial Day. And APC responsible for bloodletting in Nigeria, says the PDP. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anakon. Police Commissioner in Imo Abutu Yaro says operatives of the command have arrested suspected killers of Ahmed Gulak, killers of Ahmed Gulak, former aide to former aide to ex-president Goodluck Jonathan um, in the state. Gulak was murdered by some gunmen in Oweri, Imo State Capital, on his way to catch his flight at the Sambakwe Airport. President Muhammad Buhari had earlier warned that those involved in the gruesome murder of Ahmed Gulak, former advisor to President Goodluck Jonathan will not escape the wrath of the law. Now, what is really happening in the Southeast and how can it be resolved as soon as possible? Joining us to have this conversation is Dennis Amakri and um, Bishop Johnson, um, both of them security experts. Thank you very much, Mr. Amakri, for joining us. Good evening. How are you? Great. Great to see you. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, Bishop is going to join us halfway through the conversation. Um, it's very interesting to see, you know, all of the reactions coming as a result of the killing of uh, Ahmed Gulak. It's unfortunate that this ha has happened. Obviously, Nigeria is not really um, facing the best of its days recently. Um, but there's so many reactions coming from both um, within Emo State, from the North, um, and of course, from the presidency, it's raised all kinds of tensions. As at yesterday, uh, there was a re response from the, the Arawa youth who have somewhat threatened, you know, um, the Imo state government. But let's just examine, let's start with examining um, what led to the death or the assassination of Ahmed Gulak. Well, it's, um, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a situation which has uh, come to a level where a quick address to this problem is required now. Because, you know, people have been dying, uh, people are being kidnapped, and uh, the common man is just crying out, nobody's saying anything. But now, you see, it has started inching up. We are now getting up to politicians being shut down on the streets. And I think everybody's now worried. You know, and I think this is the stage that everybody has been looking for to happen before something serious is done about it. Because we, we can see that the country is sliding. It's sliding whereby all kinds of unknown gunmen, uh, now we have a chance to know those gunmen. And of course, I really congratulate, congratulate the police for tracking these people down. And um, if, if, if actually they, they are the right people who did it, I, I suppose some of them were arrested and not all killed because those who are alive can be interrogated to tell us what actually happened. So I sense a but in you know, your assertion or your statement about uh, the pe pe people who have been arrested, You're, you, you say, seem to be a bit uncertain as to if those people are really the people who are responsible. Why, why do you have that? I could sense it. You might say you're not really skeptical, but why, why is there that sense of skepsis, uh, skepticism in, in your voice? Well, I'm a little bit skeptical because um, when you look at it, um, they said uh, three were arrested. Uh, but later, if you read the report very well, that uh, the statement that the police PPRO sent out, he said that six, uh, six people were killed. Um, and then the other four, all of them were fatally injured. I don't understand what that means, because fatal means they are dead. Hmm. Injured means they are still alive, but they were injured. So. I don't understand that language of fatally injured. So could it be a, so, could it be an issue of semantics, sentence structure, or just maybe an undertone of something the police is not telling totally us? Totally wrong, wrong English. 
you know, you don't say fatally injured, you know. So what do they really mean by that? Okay. Fatally injured. It means that some people are still alive, some people are dead. So which one is which? Okay. You know, so this, these, are, these are things that you want to be very clear about. Let's examine, let me just follow your lead. Let's examine the police um, report uh, and what they have gathered. Like you have said, you're already picking holes uh, in some of these things. The police statement um, sounds to me an onlooker um, because Gulak was supposedly a guest of the government and would have you know, been escorted by policemen uh, from government house to the airport. But then he decided to change plans. Could he had gotten wind or sensed that something was off and maybe he was trying to evade it and then ended up in the hands of these people who, um, you know, killed him? I don't think so. If he's, uh, if he's actually a guest of the government, I think they would be responsible for picking him up at the airport and also responsible for taking him back to the airport where he was traveling under escort. But uh, for him to not take uh, a car hire and then, of course, go by himself, and the police commissioner have said it, that he never told the police uh, that he's traveling, there was no escort with him. Uh, so those are questions we want to ask in the investigation. Why was he not going with uh, 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 security escort? And of course, why did he leave the hotel with the car hire? So these are, these are questions that we need to get uh, from the investigation that is going to come out. So let me put you in that position now as a security person. If you're posted outside a person's hotel or you are assigned to watch a person and be his security guard, for example, um, how does that person slide by you to take a public transportation? Uh, and leave as far as towards the airport without you getting any wind of it, because it sounds more like there were police officers for him, but then he somewhat evaded those people and took a public transportation. And that's my, hence my, my um, question before now. Could there have been something that he sensed? What could have... I mean, let's just play with the mind of, you know, a security person. What would make another person want to run away from security and run to the airport? I don't think so. I really don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think that he, he went through the back door and took a car and then disappeared. And then, of course, they traced him all the way and killed him. You know, I, I don't really think so. Because um, definitely the people that were supposed to take him to the airport might not have been there. And, of course, if there are security men that are uh, assigned to come and look after him at the hotel, uh, they could they could tell us that uh, a cab came in there and they couldn't find him and then of course he, he he sneaked into a cab and left. I think there are too many holes asking for answers, mm. you know. So let them do a good job in investigation and then of course we'll get the truth out of it because I don't believe uh, all the apparent stories. Those are apparent stories, uh, you know that. He took the cab. Why did he take the cab? You know, there were, there were uh, if he's a guest to the government of Imo State, then there must be some kind of escort that was given to him, uh, considering the level of uh, politician that he was. You know, so I think there are a lot of questions that demand answers. Well, there are lots of things that may not be adding up for, for, for us who are. Uh, uh, outsiders and for those of us who have read the police stories the, the, there's a lot that's not adding up i was hoping that bish johnson could join us because he's in emo state so he could answer some questions but we'll move away from that and then maybe come back to it um let's talk about the fact that the arawa youth are giving the uh, governor of emo state and the people um an ultimatum of sorts and they're also threatening retaliation um this is this is one of many other kinds of um tensions that could be traced along ethnic lines that are boiling uh, in the country. And now this one seems to be one of those that might just have struck a nerve. Um, for a security person, 
should we be worried about this ultimatum and the fact that uh, even the former Senator Shea Usani has also, you know, waded into the matter saying that there's no need uh, for tempers to flay. Uh, what, what, what do you think the government needs to do? And I'm not just talking about Imo state government, the federal government, in terms of this kind of situation. Because I'll tell you what, um, it's never been heard of that a Northern politician um, was killed in the north, in the east or the southeast. I mean, for Ebola, he was here, uh, where he here in, in 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 the southwest, and for other people like um, Delegiwa. So this is the first of its kind. Uh, what does this mean for our security and, of course, the the already strained relations that we have at regional levels? The only advice I would give at this time is that they should not politicize this issue. They should not politicize it because I know a lot of people will just use, you know, they are looking for a, a Tinder, you know, to spark off so that they can go ahead and do whatever they want to do. Um, this is a case, we know. Uh, it's not a common one, but uh, how about the people that have been killed all, all over the place? You know, they should not use it. They should not politicize it. Let the security people investigate it properly and honestly. And then, of course, the people that will be hearing of unknown gunmen, unknown gunmen, you know, and some of the policemen that are killing are not just Southerners. Some of the policemen that they've been killing are Northerners. Why didn't this uh, come in at this time? Or oh, because they are not politicians? Let them not politicize this issue. Mm. You know, we know that Ahmed Gulak is a politician, but they should allow the investigation to go on. And then, of course, uh, we can get a better feel of what is happening. But I think it's a wake up call that if we continue the way we are going, uh, more prominent people might be falling uh, to, to the, gun, the, the bullets of unknown gunmen, you know. Uh, that's a new term that is, is all over the all over the country now. Let me let me let me follow up on that because um, the reactions that we've seen on social media um, and in certain quarters is also querying the police. Um, you know, in terms of Gulak, yes, he's a, a politician, but it's not necessarily an elected official. And so they're saying, why would he be given police protection? Uh, they've also said that, I mean, what about the other people, like you have rightly stated, who have been killed by these same unknown gunmen? The swiftness uh, into action that the police has, I mean, the speed in which the police you know, swung into action has also been queried. If it were an ordinary person, would the killers have been found? And what about the other people who have not gotten justice like a gulag, is the law or is law enforcement um, operating on double standards, or is it that the life of one person is more valuable than the other? Uh, not necessarily, but I know that uh, the police will swing into action when the personality is a uh, is a uh, is a higher, you know, from a higher level in society, you know, and that's why many people are saying that why are we conscripted a lot of our mobile policemen to be following politicians, whether they are in office or not. You know, a local government chairman will carry up to about nine, ten uh, polls, moving around. Why don't you deploy all these people to take care of society, to be safe for everybody, than to send them to particular individuals to be taking care of them? So I think these are things that the police should be thinking at this time because um, it shows now that uh, whether we are trying to send Mopols or whoever to take care of uh, um, high net individuals or politicians or former politicians or people who have held uh, top offices, you know, they should be putting the policemen to take care of everybody, make the society safe so that everybody will be covered, not just those network individuals that we are directing this uh, security to at this time. 
Well, let's go to Imo State. I should have started from there, but I, I was hoping I would speak to the police PR, but let's go to uh, Imo State. Lately, it's been a hotbed of sorts. If it's not a police station being burned, it's a prison break. If it's not that, then it has to be an, a, it, one story tied to ESN or the other. Um, why has the security situation in Imo State, a state that used to be relatively peaceful and hardly in the news for those kinds of things, um, suddenly become a hotbed uh, for a security person. Why do you think that? Is, is this more of a political, you know, tension or is it purely ethnic? Or is it because of um, lack of good leadership and good governance? There is the very, very high tension current going on on the lead in Imo State. And of course, the people, the, 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 the the personnel that are involved with this uh, drama are aware. You know, uh, Imo State used to be very, very quiet, yes, but the kind of politics that is going on in Imo State right now, that's why I keep on saying that the politicians are the threat to security in Imo State. And of course, they need to come back and put their heads together to solve this problem. When you say yeah, politicians, so, are you talking about the government in power, the opposition? What exactly do you mean by politicians? Government out of power, government in power, friendly governments, all of them are part of it. So there is a high tension of high wire politics going on in Imo State, and it should be solved. They should put their heads together and solve it before that state, you know, blows out. Let me go to um, uncharted water. Um, I know um, that the issue of ESN and IPUB is, you know, um, a sensitive issue. Even the NBC would be raising eyebrows right now. But um, the case in which every little thing that happens, and I'm not in any way saying that killing people or what has happened to Mr. Gulak is a good thing. Um, I, I, I'm totally against it. But I'm saying... The fact that the police has pointed fingers at the ESN and IPOB for the killing, is it really the ESN and is this their stock in trade? Are they now unknown gunmen because the police has pointed fingers at them and accused them? But the ESN has come out to deny it. So is this a case of giving a dog a bad name just to hang it? Or is there more to it than meets the eye? I think they should stop this unknown gunmen nomenclature. Well, who are these unknown? How are they unknown? You know, the, God, the police themselves have confronted them, engaged them, arrested some of them, according to what the Commissioner of Police is saying. Have you interrogated them to find out who are the others? that are part of this unknown government, they cannot be an unknown government. In Nigeria, in an enclave like Igbo states, where do they come from? Where do they live? Where are they coming out from? We should be able to, the intelligence should be able to tell us who are these unknown elements. So whoever, however unknown they are, should be that information should be in the figures of the police right now, you know, and the other security agencies. So whoever they are, they should find out who they are and solve this problem once and for all. Because we cannot keep on saying or no, or no government all over the place. It has become a national nomenclature where or no government or, or non known men or whatever it is. Could this situation be have been unavoid? Um, have, could it, could this situation be avoided uh, from the onset? I mean, I'm talking about the deaths of Mr. Gulak and all that has been playing out in the most state. Of course, the governor has been coming out to to talk tough. I, I, I've I've tried severally to um, you know reach out to government officials on this issue, but of course it was to no avail. But again, I'm asking, could this have been avoided, knowing that? There have been so many things happening in Imo State, just as you have said, mostly, according to you, um, caused by politicians. Um, it makes me really wonder, where is the voice of the people of Imo State? Because ordinary people will be caught in this crossfire. Uh, I'm guessing that Mr. Gulak was just, you know, caught also in this crossfire. Um, obviously, a man that was going about his business, probably not part of whatever was happening. But hey, this is the situation now. 
The governor seems to be talking tough, but we're not seeing action. Um, so what could have been done to avoid this situation? Because right now, one side of the, the divide is threatening. They want to make sure that they also get a pound, their pound of flesh. Uh, the other side is still trying to find out what could have led to this man's death. But all of this, could it have been avoided? Uh, like I said, like I said, uh, they should not politicize it because of where he came from or whatever. He's a politician, he has friends. He was a special advisor to the former president who is from the South South. So it is not an issue whereby he was in strange area. He must have been in Ibo State for a reason. And I think the investigators should find out why he was in Ibo State. And if he was in Ibo State, whose guest was he? And if he was the guest to the person, was there any security arrangement made for him, or he himself was even trying to take or trying to be discreet? Because that is another thing that we might want to look at. Being a top personality, and of course, he was not even wearing uh, his Bavariga or anything, he was just wearing a t shirt and a jeans in a cab. That means the guy was even on that cover. And if he's on that cover, why should somebody know that movement? You know, who is available to know that kind of movement? You know, so like I said, there are too many questions for investigators to come up with. And when they ask the right questions, they will find out what is going on. But don't you think that with the fact that they have, because we saw dead bodies, obviously, um, and like you said, we're not certain if the people, some people are still alive who can answer these questions. But with this quick response and people being arrested or killed, do you see this investigation going further than this? I mean, despite the fact that he's he, who he is, um, maybe before, because these people have been killed, we might not, this might be the end of it, knowing how our security agents operate. But what does this mean generally for the security of this country? The police said that they arrested three and the rest were killed. That's what the press statement said. Except they will say that they killed all of them. So we want to know. If three are still alive, we want to interrogate them and find out exactly what is the plan, who sent them, you know, and then why are they sharing onions to people? You know, there, these are so many questions so many, so many questions, you know. A very good investigator is going to get into this and tell us more about what is going what on. What does this mean about the Nigerian security situation across board? Let's not forget that over the weekend, the president was on a flight to Mali to deal with the fact that there was a coup attempt, or in fact, there was a coup in Mali. But then our backyard is continuously on fire. Yes, of course, uh, as a high-ranking official of ECOWAS, I think he's the... Who is the president now? I can't tell. Is he, is he the president? No, um, it's, I think he's uh, the chairman. Ghanaian president right now. Kufo okay, the Ghanaian president is the chairman of ECOWAS. So, yes. as a high-ranking, you know, because the Nigerian president is a very high-ranking member of ECOWAS. And as the member there, there is concern about Mali. And Mali has to be looked at because it is important to make sure that there are no coups in Mali. Because as soon as there are coups in Mali from history, we know that it will spread into across West Africa. And I think this is the time to dip it in the bud and make sure that nothing does not go across. And then of course we have uh, all kinds of uh, terrorist groups, Al Qaeda, uh, in the Islamic Maghreb, East Swap, in West Africa, all trying to work together to make sure that they keep West Africa and the Sahel very unstable. And this is not good for the governments that are in West Africa. But Mr. So, Macri, does yeah. charity not begin at home? If this kind of um, actions were seen in Nigeria by our president, if he was acting as much as he's done for Mali in Nigeria, half as much 
Would we not get some form of respite from the insecurity that we're facing? At least Nigerians will feel some sucker. I'm asking, wouldn't it be better? Because we have a well, former president, know. Goodluck Jonathan, you know, as an envoy from Nigeria handling that issue. Why do, does the president have to go there? What about us? No, um, president. I'm just curious. I'm just a curious former, person asking. Former president, good luck. Former president, good luck. It's a special envoy to Mali, sent by ECOWAS, not by the president. And of course, ECOWAS have decided that, look, for what is going on, I will listen to the special envoy. Let us meet. Let's get together. And he has to be there because he's the, he's the president of Nigeria. So he has to be there. And uh, of course, people at home will go ahead and continue solving the problem when he comes back. So I, I, don't, think, I don't think there is anything uh, irregular about him attending to the situation in Bali. OK. Well, I want to thank you, Mr. Uh, Amakri. Dennis Amakri is a former director with the uh, DSS, and of course, he's a security expert. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we will speak about what the PDP believes is responsible for the bloodletting in the country. Stay with us. We'll be right back.